All right, and three, and two, and one. It's Sunday, November 3rd, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Adventure in Length, episode number 530. And Damon is away on assignment at the Cincinnati Gay Men's Course Retreat. And... Nicely done. I I, I, told, I I just thought about doing that, like just as I was saying it. So <laughs> we we haven't had that joke in a long time. <laughs> well, I, that's where I thought. I wonder if Jeff's gonna. Yeah, you did. It's okay. Like you. <laughs> and I'm like, wait. I, I was like, wait. Do I have it? And I scrolled down. And I'm like, oh, there it is. Yep. 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 Anyways. So, Gary, with just the two of us today, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, so, spoiler alert for everyone that thinks that we're going to be talking about a bear run that's concluding in St. Louis this weekend. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, kind of related-ish, sort of, maybe. So I, what I was thinking about is like um, I kind of want to talk about like how we probably change with the seasons, and you know there's a there's talk over the decades of the bear community that we adapt or adopt actually um, behaviors that uh, bears, as in the mammals, you know um, that we contribute you know that we that we have an affinity with them or something and it gets to be this time of year and i feel like you know a lot of people slow down and calm down and they you know don't really do a whole lot or go very far or you know visit people or interact with that kind of stuff i do think some of it is geographic so i do want to put that disclaimer out there that obviously if i lived in san diego it would be you know a beautiful 70 something degrees you know 360 days a year and i probably wouldn't give a shit um (laughs) But I live, you know, up in the the northeast section where we have all four seasons. And Jeff, you come from the north, so you know what the the seasons are like. And you have seasons ish in Texas, uh, <laughs> from what I understand. So now you're in going yeah, into have, the non have, the non air conditioner season. We have we have summer and road construction. I mean, it's basically the reverse of Minnesota, which is winter and road construction. Right. So. Um, yeah, like I, I'm going to, you know, at least for me, you know, I know that this is the time of year, like I don't dread it, but this year specifically, I'm thinking about how winter is coming and I'm not super excited about it only because snow means a lot of things. Uh, on the positive, it gets a lot quieter. Mm-hmm. For those that don't know, snow as frozen water absorbs a lot of sound. So it's just quieter outside and can be quieter in your own home because you can't hear the neighbors as much. You can't hear traffic as much. You know, there's a lot of uh, stuff like that. Um, It also keeps people inside more, I think. So you don't hear as many like neighbors, like or people in the neighborhood uh, going around. And maybe that's not a, unless you're in in an apartment complex and it's just reduced to the neighbors that are around you. (laughs) That's true. I only, I'm on the end. So I have one person next to me. Um, and we've been neighbors ever since I moved in. So most of the noises I hear, I don't pay any attention to. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, it's, it, so that's like a positive, like it's one of the things I enjoy about the, the when this time of year comes around that like, you know, the winter is going to be coming, but then I'm thinking about driving in the snow <clears throat> and how it takes longer to get to places and, you know, street plows and shuffling and, you know, so, and 
I've never been uh, diagnosed, but I think I might have like seasonal affective disorder in that I, you know, really just don't want to seem to do anything. Um, you know, I, I, as I've gotten older, you know, I've become more of a, uh, I don't want to say a hermit, but you know, a person who doesn't go out and do as much, but mm -hmm. I think that it compounds things when winter comes along. And it could just be a matter of a couple of things. It could be socialization. You know, if you don't like the cold and you don't like that and you stay inside, then you don't go out as much. I also think um, the holiday season can be a factor for people that makes them not want to do as much or go as many places. As much as we're marketed to, you know, it's a happy time of year and, you know. Um, there's a lot of things to do to enjoy. I think that the more we've developed into society that, you know, kind of gears itself based off of technology, the less people want to do stuff with other folks. And so I think that all just kind of leads to this, this kind of mental landscape or whatever that we just eh, really want to do anything. Well, <laughs> Go I anywhere. Mean, in, in colder weather, the energy kind of gets sucked out a little bit more, I suppose. But you can also think of it this way. Because it's cold, you need to warm up. And there's great ways of warming up. That's true. Um, yeah, I, I think... So you may bundle people... up, go to some place, uh, and then the clothes come off, and then you do various activities. To warm up. I don't disagree with that. Although there's a part of me that's playing devil's advocate that's like, yeah, but it better be worth it. Just saying. I remember the first time I was overnights. <laughs> and it was last December. I was horny as fuck, man. <laughs> right, but that was a different time. I mean, now, I hate to say it, but as long as you've got the internet, you could pretty much be self-entertained. That was a year ago. <laughs> For a long time. Uh, okay. I was thinking you were talking about when you were much younger. No, when I was working overnight. <laughs> oh, Last year. I thought you meant. I thought you meant. Sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you meant an overnight is where you went to a trick and you stayed overnight. And I was like, okay. No. Like, <laughs> no, basically the schedule that I'm about to go to. Uh, by, right. the way, by the way, folks, are... <laughs> We may have morning shows. We may have evening shows for the rest of the year. We've got more flexibility in our time because now I'm moving back to overnights. Today's my last day back on evenings. Yeah. Apparently, that's the only two shifts they want me on is evenings and overnights. Actually, they probably prefer for me doing my two, two to eleven shift. But anyways, that's another matter altogether. Yeah. So, I mean, I just think that we get to this time of year, you know, and, and people, I think there's a lot of psychological preparation. Um, it, like I was just thinking about this the other day I was shopping and I was like, wow, companies have been working on this stuff for months because things don't happen immediately. Like in terms of like preparation for packaging and promotions and, um, the you know design and all that kind of stuff like it, it takes time for them to put that together and they probably you know have panels or I don't know like you know some type of like testing to see what people respond to what they like you know all that kind of jazz so um, you know there's a lot of energy and stuff that goes into you know the upcoming time of year and now that we've reached November and the clocks have changed for those of us that actually do that kind of jazz um, you know, there's going to be less sun, more, more not sun <laughs> this time of year. <laughs> and, and, and not because of the time change, but because of the, uh, our, our orbit around the sun or uh, in the angle of the earth. Right. It's that damn weird astrophysics shit. Um, <laughs> Although that just made me wonder about something. How do flat earthers explain like the changing of the seasons and the sun rotation thing? Anyways. Um, so yeah, you know, and 
to go back to, you know, you were talking about how people think we're going to be talking about hibernation, uh, which is the bear run in St. Louis. It's wrapping up this weekend, mm -hmm. which quite a few of uh, people that I know of are at. Um, that event has been ongoing for quite some time, and it kind of reminds me of another event that isn't intentionally, but I kind of feel like these events are bookending the seasons. Um you know, hibernation classically was held, uh, I think it was pretty much the second weekend in November for many, many, many years. And then it moved around just a little bit. They moved it up to Halloween for a couple of years. Uh, they were trying to get a host hotel switch change kind of contract thing. And I think that was a piece of it. But, you know, the, it's it's pretty much, you know, the, the, same the time last. Though, right? Yeah, it, it's pretty much one of the last larger bear runs that I'm aware of that happens at, you know, toward before you get into the season where I don't want to say everything, you know, comes to a standstill, but it, it's not as easy to get around. Um, well, and then you, you have know. The, the holidays, Thanksgiving to Christmas uh, at the end of the year where most people are going to focus on that and probably not go to a run uh, during that time of year and also spending money on gifts for Christmas. Um, right. Or Hanukkah or I don't know, do Kwanzaa. Do, uh, people inform me. For, for for the the holiday season, other holidays besides Christmas and Hanukkah are gifts given. I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with them. And yeah. I would like to know. It would be an interesting little thing. So, I mean, you're right, though. Like, you know, finances become a, a, a thing that people, I don't want to say they pay more attention to, but um, they need to recognize that they've got stuff going on. Um, you know, in terms of, like, places to go, things to do, travel becomes more challenging, mm -hmm. um, especially because of the weather changing and affecting things. I mean, heck, just this past week, wasn't it? Like over a couple hundred flights ended up getting canceled or delayed because of snow unexpectedly. Um, in, I want to say it's like in the Rocky Mountain region, like maybe Colorado? I'm recalling which airport it was like suddenly like a major airport was just like, well, I guess we're not going to be doing much. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think that it's a whole change in, in seasons, but also like a change psychologically and mm -hmm. how people prepare themselves for, you know, the next couple of few months or so. Um, you know, and I'm thinking about the fact like I'm visiting my dad every single day. So, uh, you know going and visiting him is going to be a whole scheduling kind of aspect, making sure um, that he's okay. Although my dad said something interesting to me, which mm. uh, his sister, my aunt made a recommendation, which I'm still mulling this over, which is to put in security cams in his apartment so that I could keep an eye on him remotely. <laughs> and, <laughs> I told my dad I wasn't sure how I felt about this idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, I get where she's coming from, like from a from a safety aspect. If something mm. were to happen to him, I'd probably know quicker if I, you know, watched or mm. you know took a look at how things are going. But on the flip side of it, I'm like, I'm just not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I mean, just like one, one in the hallway, one in the the. the the living room one in the kitchen or something like that you know you don't want to put it in these private places because i'm sure you don't want to see that oh hold on are you back oh what, what? i think you're back you're moving again you're blinking okay 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 Whew, skype pickup <laughs> almost thought i lost you there yeah uh. Shit. That's all right. I'm going to blame it on. What are we doing? Uh, are we still live? Yeah, we're still live. I haven't stopped anything. Yay, internet. Anyways, where were we? Oh, I was just saying, you know, about you were saying about how uh, I wouldn't want to invade his privacy. But to me, that's the whole issue. Like, mm -hmm. 
what's the line between privacy and safety? So it's something that I'm I'm thinking about, but it could be more convenient if I can't quickly, you know, um, or due to like a winter storm or it's not easily possible for me to get over and check on him mm. kind of a thing. So it's something to, to think about, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're coming into the, at least for me, I kind of feel that way, but I don't know, like Jeff, is it different for you in, in Texas? Because it's no offense. It's warm all year round. Like it's warm and then hot and then not, not yeah. like, I mean, I'm not eating. You can see it, but I, I put in, uh, I put air quotes around your warm because <laughs> it's nice. I mean it's like it's been getting down into the 40s so it's been getting a little chilly which um, Texans would say it's freezing let's see what, what's the temperature right now it's 58 but there's there's a high of 71 today so okay it's Oh no! It looks like it's a high of sixty nine, according to Yahoo. Any case, but still, it's, it's going to get chilly. And then if there's any snow, uh, everybody freaks out, and I'm like, ha, 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 "I'm staying in. I'm not going to get on the road with you fuckers." Don't know how to drive. I was just saying, because people in Texas are crazy and they don't understand that. No, it's more of. Um, it's an experience issue, so you can kind of forgive them. But um, you know, I, I could drive just fine. Mm -hmm. You know, driving a little slower. This is one of the reasons why I have the. It, Minnesota has gotten me to to the idea of always be, leave for work early, <laughs> so that you get to work before you even start. Even if it's like 30 minutes before you start it, it, during a, a nine, nice, perfect time uh, of travel, you know, there's no issues or anything. Nice, sunny day, that sort of thing where you can just go whoosh, and no road construction or anything, nothing to slow you down. Mm -hmm. Because on those days that do, like if it gets really snowy, rainy. I see. You can drive slower and you will still get there before you start work. And then you have time to kind of chill out, wind down, grab your coffee or something so that at the time that you're supposed to start working, you can just start working. I That's don't know anybody like you except you right now. <laughs> I, I, I totally understand that because I don't know anybody like me, but it, it, it it's part of my thing is like i just i just want to make sure that i'm there on time because you know when they're thinking of keeping you <laughs> attendance counts well no and i don't disagree with that like i'm just thinking about like there's not that many people i know like even at my current job um that are there that um reliably yeah i mean and... you don't have to leave the, like my thing is like i started like today i started to I try to leave my house at round one. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not at one. Sometimes it's a little before. Sometimes it's a little after. In any case, right. I get to work. So then there I can go. I can go smoke for a little bit and then head up to, to work and keep track of my time. Yeah. I have a routine like that. And it just makes sure that everything goes smoothly um, and I'm, I'm not delayed. So, and right. if I do get delayed, I panic. So, I just don't okay. like being late for things. No, I mean I can understand that. I'm I, I'm not. That's not the part of the the whole gay stereotype that I that I uh, aspire to is is the uh, perpetual lateness. Oh, like arriving on gay time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you see, arrive on time. It's just. Like 20 minutes after when you normally are supposed to be there. Right. Well, <clears throat> and that's where, like, I come from, like, one family where habitually everybody's late. And I mean, it, like, so the family function is planned for 1 o'clock, but the reality is the family function starts at 2. We just say 1 o'clock because we know we're gonna be, everybody's going to be late. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, and, like, not that, that I believe in these things, but, like, I was born late. So... <laughs> 
like I notably in my life have kind of attributed like I'm just, you know, running behind on things. But what I've kind of come to figure out is like there's something there's a payoff in being able to do stuff kind of in the last moment, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So I'm constantly battling with myself about being prepared for stuff as opposed to rushing. Mm -hmm. Just like, for example, tomorrow uh, I'm going to be doing some training at work. And this is not a big deal, but I'm making it a big deal to me only because I haven't done any training in quite some time, Mm -hmm. really. And, you know, it's an opportunity and they put in a a position at work for it. And so, you know, or put kind of uh, posted about it. So I put in my hat and nothing's, I haven't had any formal discussions. I've just been asked to like do this thing. So I don't know if this is like a test, um, you know, of how I can instruct or, you know, if it's more just really like opportunistic (laughs) as in, um, you know this program really well and you say you have a background in this, so go do this thing. (laughs) So anyways. I I had a very similar thing last year. They had me be training one of my classes or or one of the classes for at my work. It was only like three people, but yeah. I brought materials home that I'm gonna work on later today to be better prepared for tomorrow Mm -hmm. because I kind of feel like compared to my past, I was talking to my dad about this, um I'm used to working in an environment where there's a ton of preparation to do things. And so I'm now in an environment where that isn't necessarily the model. And it's not that one's right or one's wrong. It's just, it's an adjustment for me because I'm used to having knowledge of things in advance and having things being prepared in advance and things scheduled. And, and I, I'm not necessarily in that I'm working, I think more like uh, in an environment where people are, more fluid like to roll with things as they occur so it's an adjustment um and i think that you know that's kind of the key factor when you get into you know whether or not you're the type of individual that withdraws um you know at this time of year which is kind of the what i was thinking of in terms of this topic was you know do you intentionally or is it unintentional like i think people in my region geographically kind of withdraw but that's just because of the weather like they don't mm-hmm. necessarily want to be outside in the cold and you know and all the crap that i was talking about earlier um but that's why i was asking you like because you lived in minnesota born and raised and then moved down to texas like do you see a difference in terms of like the way people you know uh i guess in a general term like live their lives or do you think that there's some similarities, even though you don't really have snow and that kind of stuff? Well, I think I think there's similarities mainly because the Texans aren't used to the cold. Heat, <laughs> no problem. Uh, but uh, but the cold, uh, I think I think it's pretty much the same thing, except no snow. It's like they could still easily drive somewhere without having to deal with snow, having to make sure that the streets are sanded or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I, I think there are some similarities, but it's just a different purview. It's their energy is being sucked out from, it's like they're solar powered <laughs> or heat powered. <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it, I mean, then just saying, ooh, it's cold, do you want to come over? You know, that sort of thing. Although, to, to truth be told, I'm a bit of a hermit myself and have been quite often, so I don't really get get out much, so I'm not exactly sure. But Do you feel that you behave any differently at this time of year? Like, like that you do less in terms of, like, compared to, like, when it's warmer out? or No, I don't think so. I think okay. for me, myself... I don't think anything really changes, mm-hmm. except I wear more clothes. <laughs> okay. I mean, besides when I'm doing the show, because terms of service, but yeah, I can understand that. Like, it's one of the things I've already noticed about like with the office here. Like, it cooled down this past week, and I was like, oh, it's getting cold out. Like, because the the place where I'm living doesn't necessarily have the best of insulation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not awful but i'm also like my office is on a corner of 
so like I have two exposed walls with windows. So, mm. yay! Like you know, atmosphere hence, and hence changes. the hat and sweatshirt. Oh yeah, and a lap blanket and like you know, fully clothed and all that because. Like, yes, my furnace is on, but, you know, I have it set lower on purpose, so I don't have astronomical bills. Right. Well, yeah, and, and unfortunate. see, here's, here's the problem with living in the South, is, is it, we ha- kind of have the reverse of what you guys have, is where the astronomical bills happen during the summer, while yours is more in the winter. Mm-hmm. But the only thing is, with the winter, you can always put more stuff on. You can only take so much stuff off. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So. And see, that's that's where, you know, people kind of debate about with the, the seasons, what they like. Like, uh, about two weeks ago, I was like, oh, autumn is so beautiful because the leaves are changing. And then yesterday, I was not a fan. It was cold. <laughs> it was raining. There were wet leaves everywhere. Um you know, like, it's so, but then usually when spring comes around, I'm like, oh, like, look at, you know, everything's like looking nice again and it gets warmer and you'll wear shorts when it's only 50 degrees out. Cause you know, <laughs> it's been, it's cause it's been cold for months. So yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, people kind of go through their own personal, uh, change of season and how they, um, you know, choose to choose to do things. And sometimes, uh, I guess my my thought is, you know, I hope that everyone's doing what is best for them. Uh, and I kind of say it that way with a question mark, because sometimes I think we do things that we think are best for ourselves, but they're not necessarily the best for ourselves, you know, by um, probably being more withdrawn or not going out as much and doing things. And uh, I know last year that was a big thing for me. You know, I wasn't working for the year and I went into a really bad depression and it affected quite a bit of things. And, you know, this year I've been doing better and um, working and socializing with people. And it's kind of ironic because I'm like, wow, what a change a year has been. Because last year I truly was hibernating, like not talking to anybody, not going anywhere, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And this year people are like, hey, what's going on with you? Blah, blah, blah. And I feel bad because I don't even feel like I have the time to dedicate to reply to people and um, let people know like, oh, I've got this stuff going on. You know, I've got the work. I've got dad every single day pretty much. I've got, you know, the podcast. I've got the Bear Run. I've got the HIV Task Force. You know, I mean, I've mm. got all these other hats suddenly in a way that I kind of feel that I'm wearing, that I'm trying to um, balance all of that stuff out. So I'm like... But that was part of the thing with me last year um, when I was really feeling down on myself and withdrawn. There was a part of me that was like, I know that this is a moment and like this will pass. It doesn't make it any easier. Mm. Um, But it can be it can be a little bit of a challenge. So what I'm hoping is that, you know, people out there kind of notice that, you know, that they have a friend that might be going through things who isn't really opening up and talking about it. Even if you just, you know, kind of check in on them and I don't mean to pry into their life, but just be like, hey, hope everything's okay. Haven't heard from you in a while. You know, things along those lines can be um, really helpful because I know for the people that did that with me last year that like, well, I wasn't really necessarily being responsive and you might think that it uh, can kind of make things more difficult or compound stuff. It is, in my opinion, usually more beneficial that you, you know, say stuff uh to reach out and check in on people and it's difficult you know like i feel like i've lost connection with some people and it isn't intentional but we all got lives and i think when and it's interesting to me because sometimes i think back like you know was life simpler without all the stuff and in a way i think it was but that's because our world was so much more smaller Mm -hmm. so like you know without um well, I'm just going to call it this way. Without the distractions, mm-hmm. I think you were able to focus on the immediacy of things. Um, you know, in terms of like, you know, if you didn't travel far from home and you didn't have much to do, you know, in terms of places to go and, and things, 
to you know either be distracted by or entertained by or whatever the factor may be, then you spend more time focusing on whatever that stuff is. So it might be you know your personal health or um, the home, those type of things. And now we I think shift much more to creating stuff that like takes care of things for us so that we can spend more time being leisure. Lee, but the leisurely, I think, is kind of where I'm like, mm, you know, what is what is that taking away from? In mm. that case, so yeah, but I, yeah, I, I I I think it's I think when it does get cold or cooler, in my case, um, a lot of energy is kind of sucked away, and you kind of move into that that mode of uh, conservation of energy, you could say. So well, and so I get a little bit, a little bit lazier, a little bit more withdrawn, and more hyper niche, ish. Well, so I was just thinking about something, and I'm curious because I can't relate to this. I've never been a thin person in my life. Um, I've been smaller, <laughs> but I haven't necessarily been thin. And I kind of wonder if there's something about body size, like and comfort, that are a factor. Because I'm thinking about some people that I know. And I'm not thinking about their size, but what I'm thinking about is like some people really love the change of season and they love like snow and winter. And you know, uh, uh, uh. I am not that kind of person. And there's a part of me that wonders, is it because it takes more effort to do things being a bigger person? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, you, you got more weight to move around and it takes a little bit more energy to do so. Right. Um. And so, you know, there, there's just the general comfort level, but I also wonder if, like, that's a, a factor of it all. So I don't know whether or not, you know, I'm, I'm basically speaking up my ass, or if, you know, there is some reality to that, like, the people that are more active physically, you know, um, that to them the change of season doesn't have kind of the same, um, you know, results in terms of how they do stuff. So to all our... Stuff. To all of our skinny fans, let us know. <laughs> I mean, I was skinny once. Once. I was going to say, there are there is documentation somewhere on the interwebs. There is proof that you were uh, a smaller individual in your past. Yeah, I, I really feel the that there's a, con a conservation of uh, weight in the bear community. Mm -hmm. That if somebody's losing weight, somebody's gaining. Well, you know, there's always been this sort of, well, I don't want to call it a silly theory. I'll just call it a theory that when <laughs> some people lose weight, other people gain it. Kind of like fat molecules get airborne and you swallow them. Like, that's not how it works, as well, much as I know, in terms of science. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I mean, I think that, you know, I do believe that there's like a that there is a conservation and law of energy in terms that there's only so much energy in existence, period. Right. And it just constantly changes form. Yeah. But I don't believe like that, you know, there's an absorption factor. Like I know couples who one is smaller, one is larger and they just kind of stay that way. It's not like the smaller one sucks away the fat from the bigger person. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, you know, it's not necessarily between case. couples. It's just, uh, it's it's more of a mystical thing. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd says in the chat, I'm back and forth from skinny to large, but I thought larger people would enjoy winter more. More padding? Mm. I don't know how I feel about I that. I think we could tolerate winter more. Correct. Like, I think we don't get chilled to the bone as quickly. Mm -hmm. Or as cold necessarily. Yeah. So it's just more about tolerance than anything. And those and our 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 young skinny uh, friends and admirers uh, really would like us during the winter, especially. Well, so here's. <laughs> well. This is this is it depends on whether or not you're a furnace or not. Like, so here's the thing about <laughs> about hibernating. OK, I have some friends, very dear friends of mine who are furnaces. Mm -hmm. They either call themselves furnaces or they recognize that they are because they run hot, like body temperature wise. Mm -hmm. Like they will sweat easily in bed if they have too many covers. 
They may not sleep with covers, you know, um, and I'm on the other end. I am like, nope. Like this last night I had a, a sheet, a bed sheet and a quilted blanket and a quilt uh, from a long ago family member and another blanket as well. But that's because I knew it was going to be cold last night. And even though my furnace is on, like, I'm not putting the heater in my room. Like, nope, no, we're not running up that bill just yet. I'm going to try to hold off on that. That's the way I am. Mm -hmm. So if someone is a furnace (laughs) and we happen to be, you know, staying in the same bed together, depending on the dynamics of that relationship slash friendship, you know, I think what you're saying, Jeff, is like the whole big spoon, little spoon thing can really be a good dynamic. Um, it but doesn't again, necessarily be need to be spooning, just just curling up together, concert, uh, uh, sharing a body heat, right? So, I mean, I think there's there's always kind of a <clears throat> I don't want to say a battle, but you know, it's interesting to me because uh, in terms of like the history of like people and sleeping arrangements. The dynamic of two people in the same bed together is like a creation from the 20th century, which is cracking me up to no end. Because prior to that, pretty much through most of like human like history, we had separate beds. Mm-hmm. And it cracks me up a little bit because some people kind of look back at like the 40s and the 50s or before and they're like, wait, if they had separate beds, then how did they ever have sex? Well, just because you have a place. twin... <laughs> Just because you have a twin bed doesn't mean you can't have sex on it. I'm just saying. There are plenty of surfaces and areas to have sex. But the <laughs> just say it. But no, like, you know, like we we have this like concept now that like, you know, oh, well, you're a couple and you stay together in a bed. But then like even within the bear community, speaking of hibernating, you know, and, and body warmth and all that, like how much have you seen Jeff in the past maybe year to year and a half about the new bigger beds? Like and by that, I mean, like like king bed but like extended i don't mean like a california king like i mean like like where yeah, yeah, yeah. easily three four people could fit in this bed mm-hmm. like if you took two queen beds and put them together right um and it's kind of like there's a part of me that's like do you need that much surface area but then the more i think about it i'm like well i sleep by myself and i have a queen bed so <laughs> i have a king <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean i think that you know there's there's something to be said for uh the you know that you you get the you have to find the balance of what that stuff is sorry i'm reading the the chat tub says my husbands and i are both heaters we don't sleep together in the summer <laughs> yeah i completely understand that <laughs> Yep, four people at once. Now, wait a minute, is that... <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd. <laughs> so, so, let me read this okay. verbatim just so everybody knows what it says. I am not saying I experienced this, but my yearly trips to America, I have seen beds suiting for four people at once on a regular basis. This is not me saying I was having foursomes. <laughs> But the, the the question is is that for average people or for bears? Yeah, really, because it might only be a three person one if it's bears. Right. Yeah, it really kind of depends. For the bigger bears, I should say. Not yeah. all bears are big. Four bears. Four bears. Jesus. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, but this isn't America. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call this out and this is gonna sound <laughs> super interesting. American bears are bigger than probably bears anywhere else in the world. On average. Right, because we just fat. Like, because I've seen pictures of bears, whether it be marketing promotion or even just like in social media from other parts of the world. And bears in other countries and other parts of the world are not as big as American bears, just physical body mass. And then, of course, you have Texas, where everything is bigger in Texas. (laughs) Well, I will say... There are some blessed men in that state. Not that that <laughs> means something, because there are blessed men everywhere in the world. But you know, it's 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 a humorous 
connection when you say to somebody like, oh, you are in Texas and living up to the standard. I see that right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know. That's where I live right now. <laughs> yeah. So it just happened that I was skinny while I was in Minnesota. And then when I moved down here, I kind of gave him some weight. I don't know. But that's not how it works. I've been to Texas several times. There are a good many individuals who are not larger in Texas. Just as a frame of reference, for those of you that have never lived there, I don't want you to think like that if you go to Texas or move to Texas. That <laughs> Everybody's fat. Right. Yeah. This isn't a uh, Wally where everybody on the spaceship, you know, has ballooned up in size or anything. It's right. not. No, that's not how that works. <laughs> Lloyd booking flights, flights down. Now. Wow. After I said you should see Texas, but you know, anyways, I know, know. Uh, apparently this, you know, the, the game is afoot still to try to like meet up with all the, the hosts. So that's still a thing apparently. Yeah. Even, even I still haven't met Damon in person. <laughs> well, that's because Damon doesn't go to Texas. <laughs> that might change at some point. Damon doesn't do cold <laughs> or, or hot. Well, he just went to Vegas, though, and we'll talk about that more next week. Uh, for those of you that are kind of wondering, we're going to do our what's going on uh, for the month of October next next Sunday. So speaking of which, uh, I think we're kind of like getting into to wrap up a little bit here. Mm. So uh, plans for the rest of the year, just so y'all are like seeing a little preview. Behind the, curtain. Uh, the plan is later in November. Hopefully the last Sunday of the month, we're going to have a interview show with one or two guests and we're going to talk about prep as in pre exposure prophylaxis. Um, it's been a topic we've wanted to talk about for a long time. And uh, I pulled the trigger and reached out to a community of people that are educated and knowledge. And I wanted to get some people that are involved in the bear community and so uh, I made a connection online with somebody, and he's cute, too. Um, not that that matters. So uh, that's in the works as a plan. Um, we we and, always pref- like to have cute people on the show. For the, their brain as well as being able to look at them. <laughs> brain, body, you know, beard. It all counts. Yeah. Um, so that's currently underway um, as a subject matter. And then uh, I've reached out to Ed, who, if you recall, Jeff, we had him on when we talked about the decline of gay bars. Mm-hmm. He uh, did a, a kind of a, I think in, he did a. He was in a, Austin recently, too. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, he, we didn't get a chance to meet up. But. Oh. He did a paper and then uh, and then a lecture kind of thing, and so our workshop. And then he came out and talked about it. I think it was about two years ago. So yeah. I asked him to come back because um, he is pursuing a career in uh, sex counseling. I think he'll correct me on that when he comes on. Uh, but I want to talk to him about the dynamics, like kind of the landscape of relationships. So we're probably going to talk about a lot of different kinds of relationships. Um, I thought Ed would be a good person to talk about, like, you know, polyamory versus uh, polyandry and polygamy and uh, open relationships, closed relationships and monogamy and all that kind of jazz Mm -hmm. uh, to help people better understand that. And uh, I haven't confirmed it yet, but I would like Daddy Hadrian to come back in December. Daddy Hadrian to come back. Uh, Come again and again Mm, and again. again. (laughs) <laughs> so uh we'll see if we can get him on uh hopefully in december uh to have him on for a discussion um i'd like to do a retrospective and talk about what's happened in the past year since tumblr had its big change um because it was a year ago in december when tumblr was like we're changing our terms of service and so everybody was like giving a one finger salute and leaving um <laughs> Lloyd. Uh, so yeah, and um, and there's some other things. Let me uh, take a quick look at what I was thinking about that we were going to have some discussions about uh, towards the end of the year. Um, oh, Jeff, you requested that we do a this that or other show. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so that one will probably be December. I forgot what I said uh, for that, but that's okay. I'm sure you uh, it down. Useful holiday gifts. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, we'll probably do our year in review. Uh, some other potential topics, maybe not be- before the end of the year, but maybe in the beginning of the year, is to do, uh, uh, let's talk about kink gear. Um, to talk about the the stuff that helps make kink work for people. Key, keyword there, because I've seen some Facebook posts that mention stuff like this, is helps is not required, right? but helps. Because I've been seeing stuff like uh, people posting, it's like, like for in regards to pup plays, like you don't have mm-hmm. a hood, you don't have a harness, you don't have this, that, or other, you don't have this gear, that's okay. You can right. still do pup play. It's totally fine. It hel- It's helpful, especially for things like pups. Uh, uh, without the not in, thinking about the hood, but like knee pads and mm-hmm. uh, even mitts, uh, uh, which which helps when if you're ever on your uh, on your uh, knee on all fours. Um, those type of things not required, just helpful. Right. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I mean, I think that's one of the key things that will be good about that discussion is to say, like, here's the different things that exist, but the reality is you don't need it. It's not a requirement. And if anybody says that you need something, they're assholes and they should make you feel like shit. So that's how that goes. Um, so, yeah. So just some, some things along those lines. Uh, as always, if there's anything that people have ideas about that they want to hear about or talk about, uh, let us know. Um, you know, and I'm still, I, I have this pipe dream to have, uh, somebody that I connected with years ago that I haven't talked to in a long time to come on, who is actually a researcher in, uh, kind of leather kink and sex to come on to talk about, um, the psycho bio aspect of things. Um, and, uh, and it comes up, of course, after every single big bear event, people talk about run drop. And he actually, uh, this gentleman who lives in California, um, has uh, some perspective on that. And I think it'd be good for him to kind of talk about, like, what that is. So I still have, you know, potential ideas. And not that he necessarily watches the show or listens, but Daniel Franzese, uh, your big and fall campaign is beautiful and so are you. And um, your recent Instagram post of you uh, at a nude beach only showing off your bum at the pool <clears throat> So, uh, oh yeah, more more of that. We'll talk about please. that later. Yeah, yes. um, he's 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 coming into his own, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying it. So, and I would I would really I like the fact that he's kind of championing for um, big guys mm-hmm. and sexiness and stuff. So, yeah, body positivity. Here, here. Ooh. Love your body for what it is, and if you want to change something, work on it. Anyways, that's beside the point. Hey, guess what? I think that's it. Uh, that's the end of the show. Oh, uh, plenty of ways to contact us where you can follow. Uh, send us questions about any of the topics that we told you we will be talking about. That's a good example. You can either leave a comment on our blog at cubsoutloud.com, shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, or with your questions at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course right here on YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the place of the URL. Oh, excuse me. Um, you can join our Entourage chat, which has many things that just kind of uh, show up on there and discussions. You can go to telegram.com slash or tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col you can subscribe to your to our google calendar uh, at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col on your computer and once you got that you can use the apps um you can support us also by going to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud where you can find uh our latest uh join us on a mouth adventure i don't remember what the, the whole thing is uh take you eat me on a what was it what was the phrase <laughs> Take men on a mouth adventure. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's our, our brand spanking new shirt. Uh, does 
designed by Smashy, who we absolutely adore. Um, or you can get like a, uh, uh, now that we're sticky, here's your cookie shirt. You can get a uh, hat like Gary's wearing. Um, you can get uh, sweatshirts like Gary's wearing. Um, and various other accoutrement uh, and uh, stuff like mugs and soup bowls and chili bowls and uh, backpacks, all sorts of things uh, at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, otherwise, if you don't need any merchandise, or you can um, become a patron for as little as a buck a month or as much as you want, you know, whatever. Get me a new computer because uh, BlizzCon was this weekend and I think I might need to start upgrading my computer for reasons besides the podcast uh, at mm-hmm. patreon.com slash comes out loud. And also it would benefit the podcast if I had an upgraded computer, just saying. Um, you can also uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play, and uh, also Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box at box puppy, box got box, something or other. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And if it's because of the podcast, just let me know that. Otherwise, I think you're like a bot or something, you know? Like, so just communicate. Tell me, hey, I, I saw you on the podcast, or I think you're sexy, and I want to, like, you know, exchange DNA with you. Something. Because if you just send me a random, like, request, and I don't know you, I'm going to be like, who this? Just, just a few words. Hey, I, I saw you on Cubs Out Loud. I think you're hot as hell. That sort of thing. Right. It's kind of like a quick little preface. I saw you on Cubs Out Loud, or hey, I like your show, that sort of thing. Um, in any case, uh, with that, uh, say good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>